Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to talk about Black History Month. The month that is a celebration of my people. Because I am a black man and everything. And it's about all our accomplishments. Um, all the oppression that we have gone through over like centuries um, of living in like America and stuff like that. And even till this day, we are still being oppressed. And so I'm here today to talk to you about certain characters or TV shows or episodes that revolve around Black History Month that I personally enjoy. So I'm here today to talk to you about Power Rangers Beast Morphers taking care of business. Ironically, this was the last Power Rangers season to come out before Dino Fury. So this was the hybrid of like the Saban era and Hasbro. And they did a really good job. It's funny because they went back in time to one of the older Sentais where the Rangers actually wear leather jack uh, leather outfits instead of spandex. That's crazy. And it looks great. Now, this is one of those animal type seasons where they use like animal DNA on like the morphing sequences. And they use this thing called Morph X. And you know, it's like this gooey green stuff from the morphing grid. Which I never thought of the, like that stuff being like goo, but hey, whatever, you know. So, there's a special organization on Earth, um, hit by Robbie's mom, and so like the commander lady, and so they're there to protect like the city and the planet. And the mayor doesn't like the idea of rangers, you know, like doing things on their own instead of being law enforcement, you know. And what's ironic is that the mayor, he is the father of Devin. Devin is the Red Ranger, who just recently became the Red Ranger. He was never supposed to be the Red Ranger. He's just a dude who plays video games and kind of slacks off a little bit uh, to the annoyance of his dad. And so when push came to shove, he did what was necessary, especially when two of the other recruits for Power Rangers were like captured by... Um, I forget the bad dude's name. Now, what's ironic is before this came out, people, Evox, I think his name is, but before this came out, people was all like, this feels like RPM. And so I'm just like, nah, it can't be. That's from another dimension and stuff. And so it had a very similar quality to it. But then ironically, yeah, they tied both series together. That, it's crazy. They tied a Disney and Nickelodeon series together. Now they've had crossovers with some of the um, Disney people, but that's about it. And their brief um, crossover. Oh my bad, I'm, it's so late and I'm so sleepy. <laughs> but yeah, they had crossover with Disney people, but they never tied two series like integrated together. So it's literally a continuation of that cliffhanger from RPM. That is insane. So this is a Devin focus episode. He is our Red Ranger, our leader, and he has a head full of hair and nice hair at that. And so like, because, like he's always playing video games, this and that. Well, his dad wants him to take more initiative. He gets some a uh, job at a car wash place. His dad set that up. He's not too thrilled because he wants to do like get his own type of thing, but whatever. So he does it. And one of the interesting things is that his dad helps him out. Like his dad is there washing cars with him, talking about this is my, my first job I ever had, and they really, really, really bond. And this is a big thing because Devin explains to like the other Rangers that his dad has never been proud of him before. And this is the first time. So he wants to keep this job. But the problem is the job is interfering with his ranger duties and stuff. He's always having to leave his job because of an emergency. And so the rangers are trying to collect uh, giga, um, giga robots. And so, so Nate can like do stuff with like his technology. But he realized something. Once it blows up, all of the circuitry is like dead so he needs one that's still like intact and hasn't blown up so the bad people they want as much morph x as they can get so they know um a certain place that they can get him and so when um they send a monster down for like distraction and whatnot 
Robbie and Jacqueline, they go to fight the monster and it takes them a long time to defeat it. And Devin doesn't hear it because he's taking his risk communicator off. And then so like um, when he finally does hear it, he shows up in just the nick of time to like defeat the monster. And so it's funny because after they demorph, they're exhausted. The other two are. Jacqueline has to eat a carrot and Robbie has to cool himself off with a tiny fan. Why? Because of the animal DNA. He has a gorilla and she has a rabbit. So in order to recharge, she has to eat <laughs> carrots <laughs> and he has to cool himself off before he apes out and gets to a gorilla out and like get too hot and everything. And when he gets too hot, he turns super angry. Now, Devin's different. Devin he freezes when he sees a dog. This is like one of the most hilarious things they added into Power Rangers lore. But I like that brand of, I like that type of comedy. Like, that's funny. The, um, what is it? Wait a minute. When I was talking about, um, Ninja Steel, I said, because I recorded that one before I recorded this one. And so, like I said, the robot lady and the news lady. No, 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 that's Dino Fear. They are in that. Hey, never mind. Like, who's the goofy people in this one? Oh, Betty and her brother. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like how comedic they are. I hate how silly they are. It ruined the show for me. <laughs> They're just too silly. I'm sick of that whole bulk and skull, like, wannabe crap. Like, stop that crap already, man. And so, like... They decide that, you know, he's having too much work. Now, it's really good for a person who's, like, stay in school to have a job. But it can be hectic. It's hard to juggle both. That's why people take, like, part-time jobs when they're in college or high school. But even then, I remember, like, God, oh, man, being exhausted in college. Like, going to classes and going to work. And it was like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it was exhausting and everything. So I totally feel Devin on this. And so his ranger friends decide they're going to help him out. And that's nice of them. Now it's weird because the car wash dude just lets people help him out. That's weird. Like you don't see that. But in a way, like the bad avatar people, they see the communicators are like off their wrist. So they go in and they destroy them. They don't hear like there's a monster attacking them like that. And so the mom shows up. And she... The commander lady. Now the commander lady, I never was feeling her acting. She never seemed like a commander type person, which is ironic. I've seen her act before in the New Zealand show, so this just wasn't the role for her, I don't think. Um, she's too soft, like spoken when she talks and everything. She doesn't have that commander, like Star Trek captain kind of voice. So anyways, she scolds them a little bit. They go, they fight the monster and everything. Now, I do love how they, like, change the cockpits up in this. They, like, Hasbro went out for this season, taught the Rangers how to fight. They, um, built, like, you know, like, the costumes out of the real leather, not that cheap mess. Because, uh, you know, sometimes they go cheap with the costumes and that spandex. They built cockpit areas for, like, the Rangers and stuff. So, you know, and that was so cool. I don't know what the Sentai mess looks like, but then they gave the Red Ranger like this cheetah blaster when he does his final attack. It makes no sense because he holds a sword. So why did they give him a blaster? Oh, I know why to sell toys. <laughs> so like he has, so all the Rangers have like these robots that connect to their Zords to help them like function with it and stuff. I like that aspect. That's kind of cool. And they have a little buddy to talk to. And so like. The blue and yellow ranger, they're too busy fighting like the monster. Devin has decided he's going to fight the Giga Drone robot uh, with his Zord. But he can't do it alone. So the other two robots, they pilot the Megazords. And so like, they are finally then able to defeat it. But right before then, the monster got like, or the robot got like a lot of Morph X. Morph X is one of the big things everybody's trying to get their hands on in this season. And so as he was fighting, when the Rangers were fighting like the bad guys and stuff, Devin's dad had got a call from like his boss talking about he got fired because he's always like leaving. And so like, 
Of course, that devastates Devin because he don't want to disappoint his dad. Like, he just wants to make him happy. So his dad see the Rangers fighting, and it's right then and there, he decides to make, like, you know, an announcement to the world, or to the city, I should say, saying that, you know, he's wrong about the Rangers. He sees that they are fighting for the good fight and that they are trying to help the city out and stuff, and they're okay in his book. However, he is disappointed in his son. But um, and he tells him that, so it breaks his heart. But then when he sees the news of his dad happy about the Rangers, he knows that even though his dad has no idea who he is, his dad is proud of him nonetheless. He just doesn't know it yet, you know. So he's happy about that. And so, you know, the thing about Devin, like, he was never supposed to be a Power Ranger. But just like, same thing with Leo and stuff. And just like with Leo, he stepped up to the plate and became leader and proven all the time why he is a great leader. He never gives up and everything. Happy Black History Month, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.